Hi there, my name is Ian Stewart. I'm the head of education with Avantis Education. Avantis Education has been working with education for a number of years. We are the provider for the platform in Malta for LearnPad. We have been working in VR, virtual reality and augmented reality, AR, for four years. We have been prize winners at various levels from around the world, uh, bet award winners, all those kind of things. And the reason we do so well is because we come from education. We come from where education is and where it wants to go. We don't tell you what it wants to be. We try not to. We try to work with educators to get them working with us and learning from them. So it's really important that we spend today not selling a product, not showing you what well, you could do, although I'm going to do a little bit of that later on, but to actually say what is VR and AR and how can it make a difference to your classrooms. As you can tell, I've been in education for quite a while. I've been a classroom teacher in secondary schools. I've been a head of department. I've been deputy head teacher. I've worked at national level uh, here in Scotland to develop a national platform. Um, I've been a Microsoft MIE fellow for a number of years. I worked for Microsoft as a customer success manager during the pandemic which was interesting. Um, I joined Avantis about seven months ago and the learning curve has been amazing. I've spoken to so many teachers around the world and I'm going to pick out a couple from around the world and get their perspective on what VR and AR is. So first, I'm going to introduce you to Mark Savory. Now, Mark is an MIE fellow in Australia and um, his approach to VR and AR is about creativity. It's about making a difference to the classroom and engagement, absolute engagement. So let's hear what Mark has. I should say these are recordings from webinars we've been doing. Um, these are happen the last Tuesday of each month. More than welcome to come and join us. Keep an eye out on social media, but I'll share that later. Um, so I'm the head of e-learning at a, a private school on the Gold Coast in Australia. Uh, beautiful sunny spot at the moment where we're getting back up to our high 20 degree days um, leading into summertime so we're, yeah it's nice and warm down here we're swimming last weekend um it was beautiful 21 degrees in the water lovely right, um, but, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but i work at a prep to year 12 school um, we're a co-ed school of around 1600 students um, and my role goes right across prep to year 12. Um, I'm largely involved with helping to bring innovation with technology in the classroom. So I work a lot in classrooms, taking those classes, teaching the teacher alongside the students, working with staff in their professional learning teams, providing training um, and support for them sort of in and out of the classroom. And so I love the use of technology and I love seeing those you know, aha moments in our staff where, um, you know, they they catch on to these parts of technology that can really enhance what they're doing and um, and make their life easier. So, right, you know, you were convincing people, you were doing it. What what's the journey been over the four or five years then? The arc of that story. Yeah. So again, I, I think you know we really wanted something that was we could see the potential for it to bring engagement, to bring a different experience that the students, you know, weren't having by looking at a picture in a book or looking at, you know, a video on YouTube where, you know, in the classroom we, we've got these interactive screens and that's great, but suddenly bringing VR into the picture just brought a different depth um, to that learning. And, and so we could see the real benefit across the curriculum, not just you know, from, from year twos that we're looking at different marketplaces around the world and being able to look and explore and um, look at similarities, look at differences to then watching a video of a shark swimming as a riding stimulus, you know, that was more than looking at a flat picture, but you could see the movement, you could see the fluidity in the water, you could see some of that behaviour and characteristics and suddenly their writing was becoming more creative because they were seeing and experiencing something beyond just looking at a flat image of it. 
Um, so we found that that really beneficial. And actually, one of the, um, uh, you know, one of those side benefits we found too, we, we had a little student in grade two um, who was engaging with the VRs and he was chatting away and, and his teacher was just looking at me with his sort of mouth open, um, a bit gobsmacked. And I said, what's, what's going on for you right now? And she said, this child is very, you know, selective mutism. He wasn't diagnosed, but would rarely speak in class. Yeah. Yet he would put the VR headset on and it was something about it that came alive for him. And suddenly he's talking and saying, and she would stand there and say, okay, what are you seeing now? Oh, I can see this, I'm doing this. And yeah, it was quite amazing to see the reaction of the teacher <laughs> in just what that different, you know, that different interaction with technology brought for that student. So, so that engagement, that inspiration, of putting the student into an environment. And let me get this clear. That's about 360 video, audio that's available on demand. You can download, create your own content, playlists that can be pushed out. The teacher controls all that. And I think that's the key part, um, that the teacher really does have control. Education, as we know, the word pedagogy, comes from that Roman slave who was the pedagogue who would lead the learning. And that's the image I always keep in my head. How do we allow the teacher to lead the learning? Without them becoming the dictates, without them becoming the, um, the you do this sort of teacher, the chalk and talk, as we say in the UK, to move it towards the ownership of the learning inside the child. Now, that's the Gold Coast in Australia, hence why he was talking about warm water and swimming here in Scotland being cold. But those pupils were diving with sharks to gain that experience. They were swimming with turtles. They were experiencing those experiences um, to, 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 to give them a stimulus beyond what they would normally experience in their day-to-day -day life. That's one of the things that I, I really like about this stuff is breaking down or melting or making transparent the walls of your classroom. To me, the Microsoft Transformational Framework um, for K-12 is one of the most important collection of documents and instructions. That should be your starting point to reflecting on what you should be doing. There is so much research in there. There is so much understanding of what's possible in there. Definitely need to dip into there. Next, I'm going to introduce you to Simon Luxford Moore, who's actually from here in Edinburgh. Uh, I've known Simon before I started this job. Um, so I, I've known him as a teacher of all sorts of ways, being creative and understanding. He's a global lead in the use of Minecraft as well. And I think those creative uses again become really really important so let's hear what my uh, what simon had to say a teacher uh, so why vr though why not those kind uh, well, of things? Yeah. yeah vr i think maybe not so much at the moment but there certainly was a conception i think amongst educators but perhaps a wider community and in industries that <laughs> vr was something techy something spacey <coughs> and there wasn't really an appreciation of how it can be used to support teaching and learning and it is now that thing that forms part of your, your pencil case uh, in the classroom and as a teacher and i'm going to say about 10 years ago now when i was teaching primary seven uh, again vr was not really something I'd, I'd even considered as an option but we were invited to uh, host google expeditions they came to our school um, it was very much a case of sign up for these different experiences, your classes. We had eight primary seven classes then could each go and see a different experience. They came with their the cardboards and they came with their devices and it was potentially the game changer, you know, to actually see the excitement and enthusiasm, not just on the children's faces, but the staff after this. I thought, yeah, this is this is something that's going to completely engage people on, an, on a whole new level now because you know, as a student teacher as well, everyone's taught about making sure your lessons have elements for the, the visual learners, the auditory learners, the kinesthetic learners. But actually, you can't break down learners into just one of those three areas because you need a little bit of both. And what I have found just through experience, I've not done any sort of research studies into it, is that actually if you can 
tap into all of those, what you're doing is you're actually giving children or learners an experience. And if you give people an experience that they can remember because they've done it virtually or otherwise, then actually that that is far more meaningful and long lasting in terms of you know a, a learning activity. So what does that classroom engagement look like and sound like? Here's a couple of clips taken from social media from around the world on pupils engaging with class VR. <laughs> towards the turtle. Can you describe the turtles? The turtles have like a brown shell and their faces look like caramel drops. Wow. Have you ever swam with turtles before? No, I've never seen a turtle in real life. <laughs> so you having fun? Uh-huh. Awesome. As you can see, uh, probably here, the excitement levels were quite high. But those are primary. Primary, you get that. You don't get that with teenagers. I'm a secondary uh, teacher myself. And for me, it's about the creativity that goes behind that. Um, now, I bought a 360 video camera and those are amazing for recording videos and taking into the classroom or taking outside and taking the learning back into the classroom. I've also been using software for a long time around 3D modeling, but there's one piece of software that Microsoft has that just makes a huge difference. Let me introduce you to Paint 3D. The Paint 3D is free from Microsoft. It's on the Windows platform. It's built into Windows or for Windows 10, but if you move on to Windows 11, you do have to go to the store and have it installed. That's okay. It's freely available. It's free to download, but it is one of those secret tools that Microsoft has. Um, and you can see in here, I've got my welcome. So I'm going to create a new. And at the top, we have our brushes, shapes, 3D shapes, so you can build from the scratch. Actually, I'm going to go into my library, and you can see there is quite a few 3D models in here that you can take and build. My uh, colleagues call this the Ian head, so I'm going to just put that one on. And you can see I've got now a blank 3D model that I can change and I can rotate, I can play about with. I can actually do it as mixed reality so that it sits on my head. I can look at it as a 3D view to get a feel for what it looks like. But actually what I want to do here is brush and I can draw and I can play about with. You can see I've got my tools here. I can give myself some hair and I, all those things are freely available. And I can look down here at what this looks like in shapes. So it can be creative. But with Class VR, you can also put this in a headset and then use an AR cube, augmented reality cube, in front of the headset to pick it up and rotate it and look at it in 3D. And to do that, all I have to do is go to Save As, 3D Model, and you see it creates it as a GLB file. Now, a GLB file is that global library. It keeps the texture, it keeps everything in there. You can also export from Minecraft as a 3D model. So you get students being creative and building things, or create your own models, and then put it in your library, share it out, and get those students understanding. This is definitely something I would recommend you look at in your classroom. It's free, it's freely available, and you can work on it. Speaking of free, I'm now going to introduce you to our free product, VR Rooms. Now, as I say, this is available to everyone around the world. This is a safe and secure space that pupils can wander around in. So it's much more like... Uh, a game-based learning, but we've created several scenes. The paid-for product, Avanti's World, 
allows the same experience but in 160 different scenes which have curricular aligned materials to allow you to explore inside. For example, if you wanted your students to wander about inside a mobile phone or to wander about on Mars and discuss the issues and problems to experience that and be immersed in there and communicate with each other inside there. Maybe a plant cell or the Rosa Parks experience where you actually go into the bus, see Rosa Parks sitting there, look at why there's two different entrances, two drink, different drinking fountains and why the bed says whites only and have that as a context for learning. So let's have a look at VR rooms. So here I am at vrroom.us. Uh, I'm going to sign in with my Microsoft account. Verified. I've already set up the account. It's only available to teachers. And we've got some free rooms that you can explore in here. And if you look at this one, there's Santa's Grotto. And it will load up. And the room will create load room. And then you can share this link. Now, only the teacher can create a room, and only the teacher can share the content out. You can tell this was rather popular during the holidays. And I can use my keyboard to move around. Notice down the bottom I've got my voice. The microphone can allow me to, to speak to others inside here. I'm going to change this room. I'm going to come out of here. Uh, I'm going to go back into my... Oh, sign me out. So let's sign back in again. Microsoft Room. And I'm going to, this time I'm going to go down to my Playground Vroom. Load the room. And the room loads. These are 3D created experiences. You can see in here I can start to put in an explore. I was speaking to a language school in Athens, which works with several schools during lockdown. And during the lockdown, they brought the kids into here to allow them to at least have a little bit of play experience. And you can see in here, there's nothing identifying the students. These little avatars are here. You can run around and explore and speak to your friends. Very, very good. But it's free. If I move on to here, this is my advantage world. And this is the full theme park. So if I go into here, I can choose which land I go into. And you can see I can super science land and I can explore these scenes with my students. If I go into the plant zone, for example, I've got five scenes in here, 11 scenes. As I say, there's over 160 scenes in here. I'm going to go inside a plant cell. And this QR code and link changes each time, so only the teacher can keep it. We've got some 3D content available. And with all good learning, we have a clear task of what we want to do. And I can enter the scene. If students are working from home, one or two are self fighting they can come in here. You can see it's based on the same technology as the free one, but now I'm inside a plant cell, and we can look at and explore what that plant cell looks like. There are... This is growing extremely quickly. Extremely quickly. So there's human anatomy. There is a whole load of useful resources that you can take in and explore. Some of them are quite challenging. So literally the digestive system as you go through the digestive system. With this one, it's the plant cells. You can see there's a 3D. And again, inside the headsets, if you've got headsets, you do not need headsets for this. This runs in the browser. See, it's running at edge perfectly happily. And I can go into the scene. It will load that scene. The scenes are actually created by our own 3D developers. Here you can see I've got tags, I've got materials, I've got, and I can explore what it's like inside a cell. Talk to my colleagues, my peers, my students, and lead them through that exploration. VR and augmented reality becoming 
a reality in education. Thank you very much for your time today. I appreciate um, teachers' time is probably the most valuable resource in the world right now. Um, and I hope you get something out of it. If you're going to start with anything, start with the free software, Paint 3D, Vrooms. But also look at the educational transformation documents from Microsoft. They are an excellent research and foundation. They are dense. They are loads of work in there and loads of things to dig into but they are an excellent starting point i would highly recommend that for all technologies and with the free paint 3d definitely a way to get started use of minecraft to explore is that part of that immersive experience and then using vr rooms to build on that to explore a range of rooms that are pre-made for education thank you very very much and goodbye